I got a question for you guys to, this morning to kind of open up. How many of you guys have a love-hate relationship with the scale? Let's just be real. Let me see a show of hands. It's okay. We're in church. Don't not raise your hand. You'd be lying. Okay. So no. Okay. So yeah. We the scale is a funny thing. I got a scale up here on stage with me today, and and we're going to be talking about this in the natural, and then flip the script and look at the spiritual implications to this. How many of you guys be real? How many of you guys actually have a scale in your home or your apartment? Okay, good number. Good for you guys, right? How many of you guys have a scale, but you never step on it? Like, let, let's just be real. That's kind of me. Like, it's there. I sometimes forget where it's at. And then I think we can all be guilty of this at some point in our lives. We have a scale, but we claim it's broken every time we step on it uh, because of the reading that we get from this thing just isn't accurate, right? It's lying. It's, it, it can't be true, right? And, and so we have this love-hate relationship with the scale. And growing up, you know, you look at me, I'm like a beanpole, right? Like I had the opposite that a lot of people have. And you guys can hate me now or hate me later, you know? I was trying to gain weight as a high schooler. Why? Because I wanted to play basketball in the college level. And I, if you knew me back in high school, I was a walking skeleton, all right, I was like skin and bones, right? And I'm like, you need to put some meat on that bone <laughs> to, if you're going to really have some oomph and some girth to, to go up against these big guys at, in the college level. And so I remember doing stupid stuff. Like I'd get these mass weight gainer shakes that had about three days worth of the daily allotment of calories and drink like two of those a day. I'd be smashing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, eating protein all over the place, and it barely made a dent, all right? Now, okay, I'm still, I, I still am pretty active, but my metabolism has slowed really down, all right? And since I hit my 30s, and, and I realized that if I just let myself go and eat whatever I want, it can get out of control really quickly. But I think it's interesting that we all have this interesting relationship with the scale. Like, like we get on it, and not only is there a number, there's an emotion. Like it's like, whoa, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Or, or we step off and we're like, hmm, not, not bad. Okay, we're doing okay. That's good for my height. Or we get on it, and we've been working our tail off and watching what we eat. And we, we get on it, and we're like, please, 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 please. Yes, it went down, right? Or whatever our emotion is, that is heavy and that can come with us. And, and, I, and I, here's what I, I realized that, man, people are funny. Some people want to lose it. Some people want to gain it. Some people, you know, you look at like a football roster or an athletic roster and people are adding 5, 10, 15 plus pounds to their true weight. Why? Because they want to look big and yeah, we're coming for you, other team. And we got a bunch of big dudes but they don't weigh that much, right? Then you got the flip side. You got these wrestlers who are working out in rubber suits and hoodies trying to drop that last fourth of a pound to get in the lower weight class so they can dominate that weight class, right? And you got everybody in between. And one thing when I think about weight, this isn't a message about our weight or what we weigh or what we look at at all or, or what we look like. This is really about our true weight and our true worth. But here's what I found. Many people are very unhappy with their true weight, right, in the natural. And, and, and we go to great lengths to try to make it stop. Or, and, you know, we work our tail off. We starve ourselves. We, we try out every new hip and trendy diet. You know, we got carbs, no carbs. We got Whole30. We got juicing. We got all this stuff. Like, whatever's hot, like, I should, guess I should be doing that. All to try to get a number to read out on a piece of glass that makes us feel happy. Isn't that kind of crazy that we live our lives like that? And, and what I've found to be true is if you've ever done any type of uh, diet before trying to lose some weight, oftentimes it's not the most difficult to drop some weight, but it's actually way more difficult to keep it off. Amen? Right? Anybody can maybe lose a couple pounds here or there by changing a couple things for a month or three days or 30 days or 60 days or whatever. But we know that true lifestyle change happens when we not only just do a diet and a fad and then go back to what we eat, but we make that change and it becomes part of who we are, right? And a lot of us that have been on that journey, we can get frustrated because like, man, I dropped it. You know, January, we get all excited. It's like, woohoo, yeah. And then like, now we're like panicking because it's hot and we're gonna have to wear a bathing suit in a few weeks. And we're like, ah, like what's going on? Why did I eat all those donuts, right? And we're trying to figure out why this is insane, what we want it to. And I think there's a lot of parallels here. Why do I bring up this natural example? Because we're talking about weights, and, and I believe it, the same thing, way this works in the natural, I believe that it works in the spiritual and the supernatural as far as our walk with God is. Because dropping the bad weights in our lives is just half the battle. That's the first step. But it's not the entire journey, right? What we pick up after we drop the weights and the baggage that's been holding us back is actually more important, right? Who we identify and where we gain our net worth and our true weight from after we drop the baggage is actually going to help us either go the way that God wants us to or help us fall back into the same weights and sin pattern that we had before. And so it's really what we focus on 
that really determines our destination. And in our, in our key verse for this uh, series in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, I wanted to look at verse 2 because we haven't even read that yet. And I want to show you guys just what we should be focused on as we move forward. I'll kind of pick up in the middle of verse 1 here in Hebrews 12. It says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Verse 2, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. I love that. So we're all in this endurance race called life, right? And if we want to win, if we want to get there, if we want to have a successful journey, the Bible, and God says, keep your eyes on Jesus, all right? Keep our focus on him. He's the champion of our faith and perfects it and works it out, right? And so I know this, that when we drop that baggage in our life like we did last week or as we continue to do, if we don't pick up who we are in Christ, Usually nine out of ten times, right around the corner, the enemy's going to either try to get us to go back and pick up that same weight we've been carrying all of our life, or he'll throw some new weight in our path and say, pick this one up. They didn't see this coming, right? And keep us again back from God's best for our life. And so it's really for us, finding out who we are in Christ really is, is going to make that lasting life change and keep us weight free as we move forward. And so today I want us to relieve and remember this, that we find our true weight and worth in Christ, all right? We find our true weight and our true worth in Christ. I'm not talking about physical weight. I'm talking about spiritual weight and spiritual purpose in our lives, right? And, and so basically what I'm saying here is as Christians, our true identity should come from who we are in Christ. And some of you guys are like, what are you talking about in Christ? Like, what does that mean? I know that might be a new concept for some of us, and so I really wanted to break that down for us today. But, but uh, this is what you might be referred to as in Christ realities, all right, or, or in him realities. If you were to go to Bible school or seminary, there might be a class called redemptive realities. What does that all mean? In layman terms, that means, hey, we as Christians, we should identify with Christ, and there's a spiritual position that we have when our lives are in Jesus, and it's all because of the redemptive work of what Jesus did on the cross for us. There's some promises, there's some benefits, there's a weight, and there's an identity change when we begin to identify, not with the things of the world and the things that kept us back, but the things that are in Christ, that will be a game changer for all of us. And so we're going to go, we're gonna, we're gonna go, go to church this morning, is that okay? We're going to have some Bible school. We're going to have some teaching on this. I like to preach a lot, but I'm going to have a little bit more of a teaching flow this morning if you bear with me because I feel like there's some scriptures and there's some promises that God wants to get to all of us that will really set us free for their life. Amen. And so the first one I want to look at is found in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 and 5. And uh, again, I, just, I really think we need to understand the weight of what Jesus did for us and what that means for us now. And so I, I couldn't think of a better scripture here. I love this. It says in... Uh, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, surely he, talking about Jesus, surely he has bore our griefs, another word for griefs is sicknesses, and has carried our sorrows or our pains. So Jesus took our weight, he took our baggage, right, he's bore that, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5, and he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Man, there is so much in this, but guys, we need to understand that what Jesus did two weeks ago, what we celebrated, was a really big deal. It's not something to just pop a couple Reese's eggs and move on with our life, like a lot of us do. No, there is power in what happened in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus bore our weight. Jesus took you and I's baggage upon him right? And he was crushed so that the power of that baggage we had and the sin that we had would be crushed with it as well. And it, notice it says, by his wounds or by his stripes, we are healed. Notice the tense of that. It's we are healed, not we're trying to get healed or maybe someday. We are healed. It's all about our position in Christ or out of Christ. When we are in him, we have health healing and wholeness available to us in every part of our lives. We have peace available to us in every part of our lives. We have this weightless, nice and free life available to us only in Christ. Outside of that, we're on our own. But in Christ and what he did on the cross really helps us obtain these promises. And so I think that's why it's so important 
that our personal relationship with Jesus is there. It's not about religion. It's not by, about coming to church and feeling like you're a good person. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus because that unlocks that in himness that we can be in Christ and have all these things unlocked to us, right? And, and I'll tell you what, man, this is good news. The Bible talks about the gospel. The gospel literally means good news. And I'm, I'm, I'm just getting started. Are we okay to go on to another scripture? Is that cool? Can we do that? All right, awesome. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, because I want to look at what God did through Jesus and, and really make that plain for us today. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is, say it with me, in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I love this passage. Here's the deal. When we believe in Jesus and we receive him as our Lord and Savior, he, by the Holy Spirit, comes in to live on the inside of us. And what the Bible says is we become born again. We don't get born again. We don't go back in our mother's womb. No, our spirit man, the real us that God created, gets transformed into a new creation. And for those of you guys that haven't been with us, we're a three-part being. We are a spirit. We have a soul, which is our mind, intellect, will, and emotions. And we live in a physical body. This is our earth suit, but the real us the real us that will go somewhere for eternity in one or a couple places is our spirit man. So when we receive Jesus, that is born again, saved, a new creation. And so the old is gone. That is good news. And for some of you guys that have a past like I did, that is really, really good news that when I receive Jesus, when you and I receive Jesus, the junk is gone, the weight is gone, and we have been made new by him. But it doesn't stop there. It gets even better. If you go down a couple more verses... In that same passage of scripture, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, I want us to look at this great exchange that happens between what Jesus took on it and he took our place and now what we have and how our relationship can be restored with God. Check this out. It says, for he, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God, say it again with me, in him. So in him, we become the righteousness of God in Christ. And I know what some of you guys are saying, what, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, when, I, when you hear the word righteous, we're not talking about some California surfer dude like, oh, bro, righteous. Right? Like, that was a sweet swell. Awesome. No. Righteous, righteousness in this context means right standing with God. All right? So to break this down, what does that even mean for you and I? Because of what Jesus did for you and I on the cross, we now have right standing with God Almighty and the Father, all right? So here's the deal. When God looks at us, if we're in him or in Christ, when he looks at us, he doesn't see us. He doesn't see our sin. He doesn't see our junk. He doesn't see our weights. He doesn't see our baggage. He sees his son, Jesus. If we're in Jesus and God looks at us, he sees Jesus. He knows that Jesus shed every, blood, every drop of his blood and he went to the cross and he died. So we're in. You know what I'm saying? Like that is good news for us and we don't have to walk around in shame and, and blame and guilt and condemnation because what Jesus did for you and I has literally changed our lives. Amen? That is good, good news. And so... Um, the Bible is chock full of these in him realities. There's actually over 130 plus scriptures in the New Testament that have the phrase in him, in Christ, in whom, by whom, through whom, all of those kind of verb contexts where if you look at that and then you look at the promise attached to that, it's talking about what you and I have access to. It's talking about your and I's identity, our true weight and identity when we are in Christ. Outside of Christ, We've got our own identity, our own personality, a lot of it God-wired, and there's nothing wrong with that, but we aren't in him. We don't have these things outside of God. We have these things in him. That's why it's important to put him first place in our lives, but it's, it's, the Bible's full of it. In 2 Peter 1.3, it says, his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So there's good news, guys. Everything we need for a successful journey in life is found in God's word. And so here's what I want to get us here because we can drop our weights and we can be like, cool, I had a great moment and I'm dropping them, I'm free. And we can go right back to picking up those same old weights. We're silly, we're creatures, we're like, okay, I'll drop it and cool for like a day and a half and then we'll go right back and pick it up. And so I really feel like God wants to encourage you guys today that don't pick up another weight, pick up his word, okay? 
We're not supposed to pick up another weight when we drop the weight. We're supposed to pick up his word. And some of you are like, oh, I'm supposed to pick something else? That's weighty. The word of God is not weighty. It is light and it is life, okay? Like, seriously, the Bible is God's word and it's not heavy. It brings a grace and a life to us because we know that Jesus said, I am the word made flesh. So when we look at Jesus himself, he is actually the word. And this is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. He says in the message, are you tired? Are you burnt out? Or are you wore out? Are you burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I love this last part. Jesus and God's word. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. I love that. Man, when we come to God's word and we come to Jesus, he wants us to live freely and lightly, not heavy, right? And so here's, here's a revelation breaker, because I always thought this was like, you know, something God was ready to hit me over the head with when I screwed up growing up, not knowing that this was a game changer, right? That God's word isn't guilt. It isn't condemnation. It isn't shame. God's word isn't hellfire and brimstone. God's word isn't a bunch of do's and don'ts and you shouldn'ts and shoulds. God's word we know from John is spirit and it is life. It is actually God's love letter to you and I and everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord. And inside of that letter is full of precious promises that we can claim and take air to and let it become our true weight and our true identity. And it's our mirror. A lot of times when we get ready in the day, we'll either take a shower, we might brush our teeth, we might step on the scale. And a lot of times we look in the mirror real quick to see if everything looks all right before we head off for the day, right? God's word is called to be our mirror for how we view ourselves and what we think about ourselves. And that's where the game changer kind of happens here. And and you guys are like, well, this this might be heavy. Well, if you have one of those huge study Bibles that are like this huge, it might be. But look at this. I put this on my scale right here. And I press it on. It's like barely getting a reading. It's like a pound, pound and a half in the natural. But what the cool thing is, the revelation that's contained within the pages of God's word has so much spiritual weight and so much spiritual power for us in a good way. And that's what I want to talk about here for the rest of the time because we can live our lives. When we live our lives and we get in Christ, I love what it says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me And gave himself for me. So when we live and we're in Christ, it's actually not us living anymore. It's Christ living through us. And so I want to illustrate a cool example to you guys about the weight we have in Christ. Mike, if you want to come on up here to the stage, uh, give it up for my volunteer Mike here. Mike is actually going to be Jesus today, all right? And this is is a good-looking Jesus. This is a strong Jesus. You want this Jesus on your team. This isn't that wimpy, you know, frail, like wind-blown, porcelain skin Jesus. This is like, this is like, I think this is like Jesus, you know? He was a little Middle Eastern. He was probably shorter like Mike. Probably had a big nose. Mike doesn't have a big nose, you know what I'm saying? And darker skin. This is Jesus. He's walking up and down the Mount of Olives. His legs are ripped, you know? This guy, this is my Jesus image right here, all right? So get this. If I'm not in Christ, I'm over here. This is, this is my identity in Christ. This is what God has called us to. But if I'm doing my life just like this, I've got to fight the devil with what I've got. And honestly, I don't have much apart from Christ, the Bible says. But when I get born again and I get saved and I put my life and I put Jesus at the center, I become in Christ, all right? And so what happens here is I actually get in Christ. I got a buddy now, right? And so notice In this predicament right here, I don't weigh any more than I did earlier, all right? Where's all the weight on? It's on Jesus. It's on Mike right now. Mike's feeling it, all right? Feel the shake, right? The weight is on Mike right now. And so when we step on this scale right here, step on that. Hello. Woo! Almost 400 pounds. Come on now. This is our weight spiritually and our worth spiritually when we're in Christ. We've got some spiritual girth. We've got some spiritual strength. You guys know, you watch the NFL. They don't put the 150-pound weakling on the offensive line. Hello. Who do they put? The three to 400-pound dude, right? Because you don't want some weakling protecting your quarterback. He's going to get smoked, right? And in the same way spiritually, we don't want our lives apart from Christ over on the other side with no weight or spiritual weight. We want to be in Christ because he carries the weight. He makes it easy. And with him, we can do all things. Amen? 
Come on, put me down. Thank you. Give it up for Mike. Great Jesus. So that is what our position is supposed to be, but we get separated from that. And so here's what I know, and here's what I've learned in my short journey uh, following the Lord. It's this. When we know our true spiritual weight, we can live a life of true spiritual worth. And I think if we're honest, we all want to get to the finish line. We all want to live and enjoy life and not drudge through life. We want, we want God's best for our life and our families. But it takes us knowing who we are in him that will really set us free. And so as I end today, I want to give you some of these in him realities, these in Christ redemptive realities. And maybe some of you guys will relate with other ones more than the other. But I'm going to read some scriptures and then break them down of what it means for us. And maybe, maybe this is the first time you've heard this. You're like, man, I didn't even know that was in there. For the longest time, I didn't know it either. And so I lived how the world told me to live. But once I learned, man, God began to change me and began to show me my true worth, my true weight, my true identity. And I'm here today only because of the promises in this word. And I believe for some of us today, this is a breakthrough moment and an aha light bulb moment. That's what I've been praying all week is that light bulbs would go on, that we'd understand who we are in Christ and begin to identify more with that than what the devil or the enemy puts on us. Amen. And so I'm going to read this uh, couple scriptures here. The first one is found in Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 10, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. Everybody say masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Here's the good news for you and I. We're not a mistake. You're not a mishap. And you're not a mess. God says you're a masterpiece. That's powerful. You may not have been called a masterpiece by your friends, your family, even your spouse at times, but God views you as a masterpiece and he's got good plans for your life. But we gotta believe that. We gotta take that to the bank in his word. I love this one. Acts chapter 17, verse 28 says, for in him, in Christ, we live and we move and we have our being. I love the challenge in this this in him reality because it calls us not to be a spectator of our faith, but that God is our source, right? A lot of us, we try to live in Christ like this. We go over here, we have our life, we try to figure it out, and we try to invite God into this when it's convenient for us. That's not in him, that's in us, all right? But when we really invite Jesus into our life and let him become the center of our life, our source, and from that place forward, we begin to live life. We live and we move and we have our being in him, that's the life that God intended for us. And that's the good life. I love this scripture in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. It says, for in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Here's good news for all of you. You're not a failure. You're forgiven and free. You're not a failure. You might have failed at one point, but God doesn't see you as a failure. You are forgiven and you are free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so let's walk in that reality and set you free and know that God's not mad at you. He took care of it. He washed you clean. That's what Jesus going to the cross was such a big deal. I love this next one in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. So I think a lot of us get stuck in this rut with just guilt and shame and condemnation. I love the promise in this. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation. Everybody say, no condemnation. There is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Wow. So know this, you aren't condemned. You are celebrated by God. Some other people might condemn you and kick you to the curb. Some other people and family members might have their own opinion about your situation. But God is not condemning you. Jesus is not condemning you. He's celebrating you. Come on now, there's no guilt, there's no shame, there's no condemnation. Jesus will never kick you to the curb. He loves you and he accepts you as you are. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Outside of Christ, we've been there. The words and the judgments, they hurt. There's a lot of condemnation. In Christ, we're strengthened. We have girth and spiritual strength like we just stood on that scale in Christ. And we can take those off anytime. I love this one. Second, or, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, but we have the mind of Christ. Everybody say mind of Christ. This is huge. So when we are in Christ, we have the mind of Christ. In our generation, I don't know what 
man, we need the mind of Christ right now. All this mental health and depression and stuff that's just trying to cling to us. Man, the Bible says we've been given a, a, a sound mind in 2 Timothy 1.7, that we have a stable mind. And in Christ, it's there, but, but we don't have to be anxious and worried in Christ. We don't have to be stressed out and freaking out in Christ. We don't have to be depressed in Christ. Any mental health issue the enemy wants to throw at is not a match from the spiritual weight that we have in him. But apart from him, we're in trouble. We're a sitting duck. It's a bound to happen. But in Christ, we can do all things. Come on now. And then the last one, because I'm just, I love winning. I'm competitive. If I can just be transparent with you. I love, I love victory verses. And so I love this one. If this is you, you've been feeling defeated and kicked down and low and like you're not winning at life in any area, this might be your promise. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, I love that. Guys, you're not a victim. You're a victor in Christ. You have the victory. No matter what you're facing, you win in Christ. And I, I saw this on social media this week, and I, it was too good not to share because I got excited when I saw it. And I was like, man, I'm going to put this in my message. I love this. And it says this, because Jesus lives in you or you're in Christ, Demons cannot defeat you. Haters cannot silence you. Cannot break you. Money cannot buy you. And trials cannot stop you. Come on, somebody. That's who we are, and that's what we have in Christ. There's no demon in hell. There's no situation that can keep us back from God's best. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 says this. Yet in all these things, in all the weights, in all the baggage, he says, get this, we are what? more than conquerors through him who loved us. I always say, I would just take being a conqueror. That sounds pretty epic. Jesus calls you more than a conqueror in him. There's nothing that can stop you when you're in him. And so you win, you triumph, and you have the victory in Christ. And so today, I just really want to make it personable for us. Maybe you've never heard these things spoken over you, or you have, but they've just been words that a preacher said and have never connected. Today, let it be more than a message. Let God really work in your heart and in your minds of who you are and what your true weight is in him. And so we're going to end with a prayer, but we're going to end with a confession. Because I think it's really important to hear some of these phrases coming out of your own mouth. Getting them through your ears and your ear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And so when you begin to put these in your mouth and meditate them in your heart and speak them out, they begin to create a reality and a truth and a true weight in your life that will trump the devils every time. And so today, we're going to end in prayer, but if you guys, if you want to put that screen up there for them and just show them, there are so many promises, and these are just a tiny sliver of the promises that God has for us of who we are in Him. So in a moment, we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes, and we're going to pray, and I'm just going to have you repeat some of this after me. I want you to just say it from your heart, and and know that God might minister in a certain area or two of these and really stick with you, all right? You guys ready? Let's, Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you so much, and we just thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you and just get in your word and understand your true identity that you have for us and our true weight in you. And so by faith, we're going to just confess your word of who we are in you. So everybody repeat after me. Say, my true weight in Christ is that I am loved, saved, forgiven, justified, sanctified, accepted. I'm a new creation. I'm healed. I'm blessed, I'm complete, I'm a partaker of a heavenly calling, I'm anointed, I'm a child of God, I'm redeemed, I'm the light of the world, I'm a masterpiece, I have the mind of Christ, I am rooted, I am righteous, I am alive, I am clean, I am chosen, I can do all things. I am victorious, I am triumphant, and I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody, give God some praise in this place because he is doing that in our lives. When we're in him, that's what we have. That's powerful. You need to wake up in the morning and just say some of that to yourself before you go into work. Watch out. When you do that long enough, it becomes your reality. And you don't go back to the old weight, the old junk that the enemy used to put on you. And you now walk in the way that God wants you, confident and bold and triumphant in him. Amen. I believe we're all on a journey with that, but I believe God had something specific for us. So let's close with one more prayer today. 
Heavenly Father, we love you so much, and uh, we just thank you for your word and your truth. And uh, man, we all want to be in Christ, but the, the way we do that is huh, it's by receiving you. And the Bible is very clear that we don't, we don't have to clean up our life first, but Father, you take us as we come, as we are, and, and then, you, then you help us. And so, Father, we want, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you or has never made Jesus the Lord of their life, that they wouldn't walk out these doors second guessing where they might go for eternity, but they would know, they'd experience that in him relationship. And so if that's you all over this room, there's no condemnation, no one's looking around, no one's judging. We're not going to embarrass you or call you out. I just want to know if there's anyone I can pray with today that would say, you know what, I I need to get in Christ and so I need to receive Christ. And so if that's you with every head bowed, every eye closed and just a moment of reverence before the Lord. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand real quick so I know who I'm talking with? See that hand. Anyone else that says, man, I, I need to do this. Or maybe re-up my commitment. Awesome, you can put your hands down. And we're, we're a family here at Alive, and so I'm, we're gonna pray a family prayer. Would you guys all just repeat this after me? Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for his cross and his shed blood so that all my sin would be forgiven. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. Come into my life change me and help me live and move and have my being in you. In Jesus' name I pray.